So we just saw how changes in fiscal policy and monetary policy can shift the aggregate demand curve through changes in the ISLM model. And now we can start to combine this with what we learned in chapter 10 to see how the ISLM model can also have long run effects. So remember from chapter 10, that if our total output in the short run is greater than our long run aggregate supply, then over time the price level is gonna to have to rise to bring us back to our potential output, our Y bar. Similarly, if our total output is below potential, eventually price levels are gonna to have to fall, bring us back to potential. And if our short run output is already at our potential output, then the price level will remain constant over time. If we can take this and we can look at the different long run effects of changes in the ISLM model by combining what we learned in chapter 10 with what we've learned in the last couple of chapters. So let's take, for example, a negative IS shock. And so we can start with the same basic framework of the model where we have LM and we'll say that that LM curve is for price level P1. And we start with IS curve, IS1. But in this, we're gonna incorporate our long run aggregate supply. Our long run aggregate supply is only a function of things like capital and labor. And so it's just gonna be a vertical line, even in this model. And now if we take, for example, a negative IS shock, that's gonna be a leftward shift in the IS curve. Let's say that something happens, perhaps the stock market goes down and people aren't able to spend as much money. And that shifts that entire IS curve to the left. From IS1 to IS2. So in the short run, that's gonna shift output down, right? We're gonna have to go to this new equilibrium of total output below potential output. And so in our aggregate supply and aggregate demand graph, that's gonna look like a leftward shift in the aggregate demand curve. So with that same long run aggregate supply curve, Combining with our short run aggregate supply curve, we started in our long run equilibrium and we shifted our aggregate demand curve to the left. That negative IS shot decreased aggregate demand and meant that we had this new lower level of output Y2, just like above. And so we know That when our total output in the short run y is less than our potential output y bar over time our price level is going to have to fall our a decline in the price level is going to have to present itself in the lm curve that's the only place in the isl model that p shows up and so let's take that change in price into account So if we have our long run aggregate supply right here, we have our IS2, just like we had in that last frame. And we have LM P1. And so initially, we're at this lower level of output Y2. And so over time, the price level is gonna have to fall. Basically, that LM curve is gonna to have to shift to the right. When price levels fall, that increases the purchasing power of people's money. Basically with lower price levels, money can go further. And so that shifts us to this new LM curve at LM of price level two, okay? 
But in the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model, that's not going to show up as a shift in the aggregate demand curve. We're still going to have the same aggregate demand curve that we had before, AD2. Instead, the decline in the price level in this model, because the aggregate demand curve shows the relationship between the price level and income, the aggregate demand curve can't shift because of a change in price level. We can only move down the aggregate demand curve. So instead, we're going to have to decrease prices by lowering the short run aggregate supply curve, just like we saw in chapter 10. And so that aggregate supply curve is going to shift to this new lower level to bring us back to our long run equilibrium. So we're going to shift down from SRAS1 to SRAS2 at this lower level of prices to bring us back to our full employment equilibrium. So just to summarize quickly, that negative IS shock shifted the IS curve to the left and forced output to fall because we had lower aggregate demand. With this new short run equilibrium, we had potential output above short run output, or short run output below potential output. And over time, this meant our price level had to fall. The only way in the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model for our price level to fall is for short run aggregate supply to move down. This is the same thing as the LM curve moving a little bit down into the right because of a change in price level. All of this taken together brings us back to our long run equilibrium, Y bar. 